Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, and believe it or not, we have some news regarding the Call of Duty franchise. Particularly, it's going to be the Microsoft acquisition of Activision, which has been a completely muddled mess ever since its very inception. Of course, Sony and Google and a couple of other of these big brands are very opposed to the idea, whereas other brands are very for the idea. And of course, it's causing so much chaos within the gaming industry. But today, Microsoft held a press conference in Belgium, and while there, Microsoft's president held up the 10-year contract that they offered to Sony to keep Call of Duty coming to the PlayStation and all future Sony platforms, but Sony is continuing to push against Microsoft's acquisition of Activision. According to Sony, Microsoft would have far too much power, they would be far too, they would be a monopoly, essentially, which is what Microsoft is kind of known for way back in the day. But right there at the meeting itself, Microsoft had this graph in the background, because of course this was once again held in Belgium, and it shows Sony's market share in Europe as compared to that of Microsoft's, which is about 80-20. So Microsoft is saying that they are really the underdogs here, and while yes, Activision Blizzard is a massive IP with so many massive games, you know, they're thinking that it's actually just going to add more competition to the games industry, and they're hoping to expand the games industry by how they plan on handling all the different IPs at Activision Blizzard. But Sony says, no, we like where we're at in the market share, you're not allowed to grow, screw you. That's basically it. So, before the press meeting, however, we got this really interesting news that Microsoft has officially announced that they have partnered with Nintendo for a 10-year agreement to bring Call of Duty to Nintendo players the same day as Xbox with full feature and content parity. So should the acquisition go through, all future Call of Duty games are going to be coming out for PlayStation, Xbox, PC, and Nintendo the same day with full feature and content parity, which is kind of crazy because I have a Nintendo Switch and it barely runs Pokemon. So I would imagine if they're going to be doing this that Nintendo's gonna have to like release a modern day console that's like actually powerful because you know, if the Nintendo Switch can like lag while doing open world Pokemon, imagine what like domination on shipment would be like, for example, you know, it would just be absolutely insane. So, but it's kind of interesting though that, you know, Nintendo of all things is going to be part of the COD series. Last time we saw this, I believe, and feel free to correct me in the comments, I did a couple of like DNA Saturdays on this. I believe the last time we had COD on a Nintendo system was what? Call of Duty Ghosts with the Wii or something like that? Like, it's been a hot minute. It's been about a decade since COD was on any Nintendo platforms. But then again, Nintendo is kind of just happy to just have the mobile market, essentially. Like, handheld games. They got that kind of a thing. Not necessarily playing on your phone, but rather having more portable devices and things like that. And just really working with their own established IPs. And we know how backwards they are when it comes to, like, working with content creators and working Working with just having their games being streamed whatsoever, so this could be a step in the right direction for Nintendo, but I have to wonder how is COD going to work on Nintendo platforms? Really have no idea. But Microsoft also announced that they have signed a different 10-year agreement with NVIDIA, which will allow GeForce Now players, which is NVIDIA's like cloud gaming service, for those who don't know, this will allow those players to stream Xbox PC games as well as Activision Blizzard PC titles. So that's pretty good right there as well. Well, we have 10-year agreements being signed by NVIDIA and Nintendo. The same agreement was sent to Sony, but Sony said, shove it up your ass, essentially. And that's kind of where we're at right now. If we go back to the press conference, Microsoft's president claims that thanks to these new deals with Nintendo and NVIDIA, Call of Duty can now reach an additional 150 million devices that it could not before. And like I just said, like this will not actually happen unless Microsoft actually gets access and can actually take over Activision Blizzard King. As of right now, these are kind of contracts that are being set up for the future should the acquisition actually go through. But, I mean, everything they've said so far, everything they've done so far, really seems like they're making the right moves. But I see why some people are still a bit skeptical when it comes to Microsoft because Microsoft kind of did something similar when they bought out Bethesda and then made it so Starfield and maybe some upcoming Bethesda games like Elder Scrolls or Fallout or whatever. They're basically making those games Xbox and PC exclusives. Like, those games are not going to be coming to PlayStation, even though they said they would not do that. As soon as they actually got the rights to Bethesda and their games, suddenly they took away those future games from PlayStation players, which is why a lot of people are pretty pissed off. So, rightly so, Sony is very skeptical and 
they're still gung ho that Microsoft would have far too much power owning all of Activision Blizzard. Like I can see where they're coming from. Sony right now is definitely killing Microsoft when it comes to like the market share and how many people are buying PlayStations and playing on PlayStations and just the sheer amount of money that Sony generates in the gaming space. Sony is beating Microsoft, but now the Microsoft is trying to make this massive move by taking over not only Activision, but Blizzard as well as King, you know, that's pretty massive. You know, that's a lot of very strong, very popular IPs. And Call of Duty is obviously massive. And that really seems to be Sony's top concern here. They're very concerned that at some point, Call of Duty will no longer be available on Sony platforms, similar to games like Starfield and stuff like that, like I just said with Bethesda. And that's what's really holding them back from making this deal here. They are concerned because Call of Duty, believe it or not, you know, we talk about how the franchise has been going downhill and all these problems and things like that. But every year, COD is a best-selling game. It makes money hand over fist. It's ridiculously popular. So that seems to really be the crux of this entire situation. Microsoft has continued to reiterate that Sony is still way bigger than they are. And they've also said today that they do not see a feasible way to carve Call of Duty or any other individual IP from Activision Blizzard King out of this merger, right? So basically they're saying they want all of Activision Blizzard King, not just some of it, essentially is my understanding. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is basically where the story ends. I, you guys know how these things work, man. Anything involving legality just goes on for freaking ever like i would be very surprised if this merger actually goes through and i'd be even more surprised if it happened in the next like two years because things like this just always get drawn out it's always boardroom meetings and press conferences and shareholders and like it just it seems every nothing can move quickly <laughs> in this space you know what i mean it's kind of weird like as gamers we're kind of like used to things being sort of streamlined and quick and having instant gratification when it comes to a lot of things when it comes to how we engage with our games but when it comes to the back end and how the games are actually made and how the companies all work and how things actually function shit takes forever dude <laughs> like we've been talking about this for like a year now and sony is still firmly planting their heels in the ground they are very much against the idea of microsoft taking over activision and yeah so essentially nothing has really changed like inherently nothing has changed here we do have these new agreements with nintendo and nvidia and so should the actual merger go through that's a pretty big deal like the xbox president was saying that 150 million new devices will have access to cod whereas they didn't have it before which would in theory make cod grow exponentially which cod's already pretty damn big but that's only if the actual merger goes through the big thing stopping this is sony and to a lesser extent like google like google's also against the idea of microsoft essentially becoming somewhat of a monopoly so as always i will do my best to keep you guys posted uh I, again if it felt like I was like reading off a script in this video. It's because I literally have a bunch of notes right in front of me to try to make this as concise as possible. You know, it's pretty easy to talk about map updates and Call of Duty news and things like that. But when it comes to like major mergers between corporations and stuff like that, I'm like, what the hell do I know, dude? I just I talk about video games for a living, so. <laughs> I don't know how this stuff works, but I'm just covering all the news and trying to make sure all my sources are good and just kind of giving you guys an idea of what's happening to the COD franchise, because should Microsoft take over, they've said some very good things. I mean, same day content parody for Xbox, PlayStation, PC and Nintendo platforms, allowing people with GeForce Now to stream Activision Blizzard games, including Call of Duty and stuff like that. Like they've talked about so many good things, like no more exclusivity and stuff like that. But the question is, will they actually stay true to their word if the merger goes through and will the merger ever go through to begin with because right now you know it seems like it's infinitely in this like limbo state and so we really have no idea what's gonna be happening but as always once again i'll do my best to keep you guys posted thank you all for listening and i hope you guys all have a wonderful day